Welcome back to Kyokaja channel. Today we're going to continue with the story of the life of missionary John Ross. In the previous episode about John Ross, we left off in 1878 when John Ross baptized Seo sang -yun, who became the first Korean Christian. Now we're going to watch as God's plan unfolds for the first Korean Bibles to be translated. John Ross's Korean tutor, Lee Yung chan went back to his hometown, Uju, with some Chinese Bibles, and he shared the Bibles with his friends, among whom was a man named Baek Hong Jun, who we'll talk about in a future video. Now, after reading the Bible together and learning of the good news of the gospel and of the power of the cross, Lee Yung chan and his friends decided to get baptized and became followers of Christ in 1879. After getting baptized, Yung Chan and his friends decide to join missionary Ross in his mission to translate the Bible into their language. Joining them was Seo Sang Yun and his brother, and that year, 1879, they successfully translate the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now they were clearly on fire for this mission. Missionary Ross saw that they would need a printing press if they were to print thousands of Bibles for the people of Joseon and Manchuria. And he personally also needed a sabbatical. So in May of 1879, he left on a two-year sabbatical and went back to England where he presented lectures on the fruits of his mission to the mission society and throughout the country, spreading awareness of Joseon and the incredible works of God happening in those places. When he returned in May of 1881, merchants from Joseon interested in the gospel had been coming in groups of 10 each week for Bible study. The number of Joseon merchants grew from around 30 in 1880 to about 100 by 1881, and it continued to grow from there. And earlier on in 1876, missionary Ross had established Dongguan Church in the city of Shenyang and continued to plant churches in Manchuria. But Dongguan Church in particular served a special purpose as a base of operation for Ross's Joseon partners. As a matter of fact, Dongguan Church still stands today as one of the oldest and largest churches in China, with thousands gathering each week to worship. In the summer of 1881, a printing press had arrived, and Ross established the Munguang Seowon, or the Munguang Institute, which served as a printing and educational facility. In March 24, 1883, the first copies of the Book of Luke were printed, and these were the first ever printed copies of the Korean Bible. And three years later in 1886, ten years after missionary Ross began his journey to translate the Bible into the Korean language, the entire New Testament had finally been translated into the Korean language. The Bibles that John Ross and his Joseon companions translated were being used to spread the gospel to the people of Joseon. And the number of believers grew each year. Churches were being planted all throughout the northeastern and northwestern parts of Korea and heading into the very center in the capital of Hanyang. He spent the last few years of his missionary career focusing on training future Chinese and Korean pastors in Manchuria. And he eventually retired after nearly 40 years of missionary work in February 1910. And he headed home to Scotland where he passed away on August 6, 1915 at the age of 73. As we finish the story of the life of missionary John Ross today, I wanted to point out the legacy that this man left behind. At the time, East Asian societies were very socially divided, and women's rights were almost non-existent, and the government was erupting full of corruption. John Ross's accomplishments in translating the Bible into the Korean and Manchurian languages, and his establishing of the first churches in Manchuria played pivotal roles in spreading the good news of the gospel. And that good news and its message of unconditional love led to the tearing down of those walls in society. And these are walls that no political, military, or religious force had ever been able to tear down before. If nothing else, the lives of John Ross and the first Korean believers show us one very important and relevant thing. Only 
the gospel can truly change and heal society. Let's remember them 